Okay, we're ready to go into our second raid. We're going to be going out with going in with this loadout, AK seventy four M from the previous raid. It's uh, it's looking pretty nice. We actually might quickly ID those two right there. Um, so we can actually chuck some good attachment onto this. I might drop the flashlight. Actually, no, I'll hold onto it because you might be able to use that to show you guys some stuff. Kevin Helmet's really handy against guys with uh, pistols and shotguns, particularly scavs as well. AVS rig was a really good find early with a class four armor, and we've got some backup uh, backup ammo. Um, so we're gonna go interchange for this raid. It's gonna be we'll go, go evening. I feel like there's probably gonna be more players on the morning, and for this one we actually want to stay away from players if possible. Um, it's our objective for this raid to loot and pillage as much as possible. Get two MR133 shotguns if possible, because we've already got the five kills for customs for prepper, but we do need to get those shotguns. Alternatively, once once we get level five, which I think we're only a few thousand XP away. Uh, if we get level five this raid, then we can just buy them off the flea market as well, which is handy. And we can also get the Salewas off the flea market, which is handy as well. All right, so now that we've spawned, now this is the railway extract over here. Um, we've got now the, I think it's called the Emicon now. It used to be called like Southwest, Northeast, and random shit like that. Um, we want to get over these. We want to get inside as quickly as possible. Outside's where a lot of the, the let's just say, You'll die a lot more outside trying to get in than you will once you get in there. Generally, like if you if you pay forever to get in there, you're gonna die to a player that's already gotten in there and watching the entrances as, as you come in. So we want to get inside. But what I'm actually thinking about doing for this raid is we maybe go straight down to the power station, um, mostly because there's some really good loot down there. Um, there's not really much threat towards players. There is a couple of player spawns uh, between here and there. There's one up on this hill right in front of us, and then there's also the power station. Um, but at the power station, we've got jackets, toolkits. Uh, what else do we have? Filing cabinet, computers. There's a lot of good stuff down there. And then from there, we can go into the back of Goshen. Uh, Goshen has a lot of scavs that spawn in there. More tool toolboxes and stuff like that we can search. There's a lot of really good stuff out the back of there. So uh, whilst going straight into idea, going straight for those tech spawns is probably a good idea. We don't really want to get too involved with PvP combat right now. Um, so, I think the spawn is literally about right in front of us here. So if you haven't seen a player by now, hopefully he's not going to spawn on top of us. We'll get down to the, uh, the power station. By the way, most people don't spawn on top of you. Like they, There's some sort of detection system in the game to say, hey, there's a player near that spawn. Don't spawn the person there. So, um, Yeah, so... Same with down the power station. Once we get close enough to the power station, if we haven't heard or seen any movement, we should be pretty sweet. Now, we're going to get down there. Uh, once we're in there, we're going to pretty much... Oh, by the way, there's a, a register key inside this bar slip. We should just quickly check that. We should. There is two uh, two scavs that spawn in that bit right there as well. All right. I can't remember which side it is. This is the Ollie register key. We need those AI2s at the moment. Until we can start buying car med kits, it's a little bit later down the quest line from Therapist. Um, as soon as we can start buying car med kits and Salewas, every single med is like is worth its weight in gold. Now, a new addition to point twelve is the actual increase in dehydration and, and energy use. Uh, energy used to be when you ran out of energy, you died instantly. Now it's more of a tunnel vision kind of thing and damage. So you just want to keep an eye on it. It's not it's not really annoying. We're currently dropping at two health, uh, sorry, two hydration and two energy per minute, which means if we're at full, we get 50 minutes. That's not too bad. Um, as you level up your skills from metabolism and health, this does uh, reduce. So uh, on my main account, I think I'm around, I don't know, level 10 metabolism and level 10 health. And because of that, I go down like 1.6 something per hour. Uh, sorry, per minute. So, now, you do have to be careful. Uh, this tanker right here is a quest objective for later on for Ragman. So, some people will be coming here to drop off their their, uh, their, their uh, beakers. Beakers? Beacons. Beacons. And we haven't heard anything, so I'm just going to go straight for these jackets. Now, uh, in jackets, you're mostly looking for cigarettes. Uh, we'll, we'll take the food because at the moment, it's actually an important thing to have a little bit of food on you and, and drink. Um, so, the Melbora cigarettes are a requirement. Um, there's three top, uh, four types of cigarettes. Three of them are for quests. So one of them's really common. That's the one you don't need for the quest. Bit more food. Bit more cash. 
Now, with uh, cash, there is the car extract at the back of the power station, so that's always a good idea to have a bit of cash on you if you can. Hot Rod, there's a bit of a uh, bit of juice for us, and that's another quest. Uh, quest cigarette right there, the strikes. So there's the strikes, there's the Malboros, and there's the Wilstons for the quest. Now, I generally like to eat everything I find early. But the Hot Rod gives you food and hydration, so... Um, not that big a deal to get it eating straight away. I like to eat and drink a lot earlier on because it levels up your metabolism, and it's going to be uh, it's it's kind of an important thing. So you need metabolism, I think, level three or four for a quest. Uh, sorry, for a hideout uh, upgrade. So um, it's just something that's nice to have. We can hear in shots towards Goshen now, maybe at the back of uh. Back of Goshen, so I just want to be careful with that. Constantly listening out for all these things is really important. Uh, I don't think we need paper for anything. Duct tape uh, is used for barter trades. Our uh, med kits use a barter trade for uh, duct tape. Our CPUs are used for a quest uh, for... I think it's signal part 3 or 4. I'm going to be checking these computers for flash drives. The scare quest for flash drives is actually really, really annoying. Um, they're quite expensive. But you also need to find two in raid for a, a Jaeger quest as well. I see three in raid for a Jaeger quest, which means like you've got a you've got a lot of stuff to loot at the moment, and um, the more you can grab this stuff early on, early earlier on, the better. Now the issue you're going to run into, particularly seeing like I've got a standard account that we're going through this time, is the fact that the amount of space we have in our stash. Um, this can be a this can be alleviated by using rigs to hold items so this like avs rig you can use stuff like that to help expand your space and your stash um so say oh, this, this this rig gets destroyed in a raid uh instead of just deleting it or selling it i could use it as a like a container for a little bit at least now we're going to creep along the back here um we're going to look inside these two little shed bits here there's two more toolkits there's the first one now, items that we're looking for right here is pretty much the screws. Screws at the moment are worth heaps. So getting our hands on a, a uh, set of screws, good to go. I think, uh, we'll hold it to the CPU. Probably worth the most out of all those items at the moment. Now, I'm not going to be selling a lot of stuff on the flea market during this playthrough. Um, I'm mostly just going to be using it to just buy items that we need. I'm literally just going to grab everything at the moment that's... Somewhat relevant. I know bolts and that are used for the for the hideout. But yeah, so I mostly just want to use the flea market to buy either quest items or keys. Keys are a, a bit of an annoyance a lot of the time, so. I know this is a really small thing, but you see on the um on the AK, I've got the the flashlight on the left hand side. I personally don't like that. I like having the flashlight on the right hand side. And then that way it's not obscuring that little bit of view. It's not as bad with this flashlight, but there are plenty of other flashlights that can be quite annoying. They have uh that are a lot bigger, take up more of the screen. This site is actually a really bad site. It's called the nipple site. Uh we all call it the nipple site. And it's just one of those sites that just eh, you know, it's just hard to get clean headshots. It's just big. Viewers a lot of your view. Uh, my personal favourite is probably the PK-06. Or the MRS. They're like my two favourites. The only issue I have with the MRS really is... I like it not on the default uh, site picture. If you hold Alt and right click, depending on the site, not this one doesn't change it. But you can actually uh, change the site picture. Now with the, um, the MRS, I like one of the, the second or the third one. And every time we go into a raid, I have to change it. Which is only a small thing. But it's a it's a pretty annoying thing when you, you go into like 40, 50, 60, 70 raids a day. Every single time you have to change it. So, um, now down the back here, there are toolkits. Duffel bag in here. Like I said, this one's going to be purely we're going for those shotguns. We'll try and get ourselves a bigger backpack. Now, there's the, uh, the field that we can use for our, for our hideout. Now, there is um, a barter trade at the moment for the hideout. That I don't know how long it's going to stick around for, but it's the it's 
it requires those fuel kits and some bolts and screws, and you actually get mag boxes, which are a sell for a lot. So I'm actually quite surprised that barter trade is as cheap as, cheap as it is when it's really just some fuel containers and some bolts and screws. All right, so slowly moving our way through here. We're not going to be rushing anything. Checking these shells for uh, for items, the big ticket items like the screws and a uh, tape measure. Now this is actually really interesting for me because I don't normally play this kind of playstyle, like a nice, slow and methodical playstyle. But I'm actually looking forward to it. It's It's been something that um, I, get, I get a lot of comments about. It's like how I don't play the game, how it should be played and stuff like that. Personally, I think the game should be played however you find it fun. But um, it's just, it's always good to mix up your playstyles because it gives you the opportunity to experience it from different perspectives as well as uh, learn different ways to win a fight and get to advantage uh, situations. There's a, gu a gunpowder, but this foregrip can actually go onto the actual AK directly. And then we just reduced our recoil. And this is where having a, uh, like a handguard like that I've got on this one, actually really good because you can put flashlights and stuff on it and it doesn't take up your stash space. Right, so we've got a scav here. Scav down. Now, those shots earlier, my guess would be at the back of, uh, was it Ollie? Yeah, back at Ollie. There would have been like two people spawned down there. They would have been heading up. So we know there's definitely a player over that side. Now, he doesn't seem like he's pushed through. This side, it looks like he's gone directly into Ollie, which is the more likely uh, situation because people would want to go for those gas analyzers and hoses and all that that spawn down that way. Those shots over there are in idea, and that's the people that are... Um, where I started the spawn, you know how I ran down the street down the side? So they've gone down that way. Now my extract is in that corner. So if we keep closer to this side of the map, we can actually extract quite nicely um, and quite quickly if, if required. There's a couple of like little ch cheeky spots down the bottom as well. I do want to check out that scav, but before I do, I'm just going to go check for the Kiba key spawn. This key's worth a lot of money on the flea market. We just heard another scav. We just want to be careful about that. And we actually are sitting quite nicely with armor. However, the um, the Vepa Hunter scavs are absolutely brutal. Now, something to take note of when people do shoot as well is um, you want to listen out to see if what kind of guns they got. So we heard those shots over there. That was a pistol. So we know, all right, so we've got a, a PMC with a pistol over an idea. Um, and then when you're hearing like full order shots, you want to hear if it's like an M4, a HK, and you learn that stuff over time. But then you actually start knowing about, if you hear two or three different types of shots, it's either like a duo or a trio, um, killing a scav, or uh, all that kind of stuff. So you, that's how I kind of know where people are. No oh, scav, it is. how I kind of, see, see that was AK fire over there. I kind of know wh who my enemy are before I even see him. So I'm not just like, hey, what? So it, it, I don't know. It just takes, takes a little bit of practice. You pick it up over time. This is where I was talking about. You want to be able to have everything examined before you get into raids because it does make things a lot easier. Another, another gunpowder. So we need to start looking at what items we're going to leave behind here. Uh, a wallet. We can just put some cash in there. Um, at the moment, I could probably get away with just eating this lunchbox. Level up the energy a little bit. Not really required. And I might drink that hot rod too. Gives us that little bit more space. Now, for XP, we only need 2,000 XP to get level 5. And that will... Get us to the flea market open so we can buy those shotguns. 
and also it gives us the opportunity to um, progress with the quest. Uh, it looks like that's a scav there, but it might just be a cash register. It's definitely a scav down there. There's a scav down uh, this way too. There's that Vepa Hunter scav I was talking about. And we want to be really careful of those scavs. They can be very, very painful. So what I might do is top up here. Give that thorax up nice and high. When that med's on three, three, just want to get rid of it. And we'll hotkey this one. You can hear him to the right here. He had an SKS, not a Vepa Hunter. They can be very, very painful. Those are... Yeah. Get armor as well. Can't see the guy that was at distance, but maybe that he pushed up with the other one. We've also made a bit of a racket here too, so we know people might start heading this way. I don't know what's going on with that. Now, things you can do is you can always like wear these things. Grab that AKM. Casing for him, I mean. Check to see what type of ammo's in there. PS ammo, so it's pretty trashy ammo. We're actually gonna not loot that for now. Um, we can buy that ammo already, I think. Actually, no, we can unlock it after. Do you hear that noise? You want to move? Don't finish your loot. Don't hang out around and be like, "Oh, let's see what's going on." No, move. If you're a scav talk. Stop what you're doing and just pay attention to what's happening. Alright, we're gonna get closer. I can't really see him exactly. But that indoor fog shit. We can't see him that well. He's shooting me through the bushes. Now, the scav boss of this map doesn't push into Goshen. I've never seen him get this far. So, we're pretty safe for now from the scav boss at least. We'll be on the other side of this uh, box over here, I think. The, uh, the scav. I'm getting shot at in the back. I thought I brought a bandage with me. I'm thinking that take note of with um. I'm gonna find where the scav was shooting at me from. All the way down there. Oh, dude. Am I bleeding again? I am. Holy shit. Alright, we, we need to get out of this area. This is getting pretty sketch. Scav's coming from every direction. Half a mag here. Empty mag there. Get this mag topped up. We're running out of meds too. We're lucky no players that come from the sides as well. There's two more down there. Holy shit. Alright, we need to keep moving now. But what can happen is you can get tagged and cursed pretty much. What happens is it the scouts will just keep coming. We have to either give up on taking that loot that's around this area, or we need to f kill so many. It, it gets pretty crazy. Right now, those PS mags are actually looking pretty good.
We can take that anti axe because it actually does really good damage. Skull mask is a bit of a meme. Not really something I really care too much about. I think I just saw another scab there. Oh, he's got a pilgrim backpack. Oh, we want this scab. There's two there. Did he go? He died. Alright, cool. Just kind of had a pilgrim backpack. Can see the purple from ages away. Alright, we want to we want to take this backpack. We want to do some looting and we want to get the heck out of here. A right, car key's not worth anything to us. I don't even think USB's got any use either. Right. Much as we would have would have liked to make on the key, uh, the shotguns in this raid, we need to get out of here because the scabs are going to just kind of keep swarming us. Gonna, scabs are just not going to stop, and we need to we need to consider that well, this is already a win, like a, f a very solid win. For being such early on, I need that. I try and loot every backpack of a scav, because that's where you're going to get the good stuff. All right, so this is a portable cabin key. That's for use for a quest. We want that one. Um, that's it for a, it's a quest on customs. The key's not really worth that much on the flea market anymore, but it's still a handy key to just be able to find. Any key you can find, hold on to it. Um, check it out later and see if it's actually got any use to it for you because you can actually um, save yourself quite quite a fair bit of money not needing to buy keys on the flea market. All right. We got lucky that the players all stayed in Ollie and Idea areas. They're probably in the middle of the map now, heading towards the Kiba store. So, um... Now, we've just got to hope that either no one else is trying to extract at the same time. What time are we at? We're at 28 minutes, so... It's unlikely. I, I usually go through a map pretty quick when I play on my main account. But most people do take their time through it. Um, so we got a little bit lucky with that respect. That uh, no one came into the Goshen while we're doing that. But... Um, we definitely know there was like three or four other players coming in from each side, so... There's probably some dead bodies up ahead as well. And I don't really run into them too often, but people always say that they run into extract campers. At least Ray doesn't prove me wrong. Um, but you really want to uh, be careful with uh, an extract camper because they take all your hard work. Legitimate play style. Boring kind of play style, but there's a few ways you can do it. You can run around the uh, the back here to extract. Or um, what I just highly suggest is always make sure you've got a little bit of stamina when you're when you're heading towards the extracts. All right, you want to move quickly, but as your stamina drops down, just keep some up, keep some up. So you've you've always got that option to run. Now, if you get shot at and you get hit, your stamina takes a hit, and you want to at least have a little bit of be able to run to some cover in that. I suppose the beauty of doing all this filming offline as well is I don't have to worry about um, streams not, but so this is actually quite nice. Um, normally I'd have a few players guys trying to be by now, just randomly, random times, but it's good fun. I'm actually really enjoying doing this, and hopefully you guys are too. Uh, we'll do a bit of a rundown back at the stash at the end of the raid, go over the XP that I made and some of the items we looted, and then uh, that would be it. All right, so we got six and a half thousand XP for that, pretty solid. Uh, plenty of scavs. We've got 11 scav kills during that one. Um, nothing really too 
massive to report here. Um, we did shoot, what, 94? So we got hit, hit about 50% of our shots. Now, this the big one here is we've hit level 5, which unlocks Skier. Um, we've got the Skier's first quest ready to go, and I don't think we'll hit level 6. Actually, we will. We'll just hit level 6. No big deal with that one. 5 and 6 doesn't make any difference. Um, the first trader level 2s that you unlock is at level 15, if I'm not mistaken. And that's Ragman, and you are, you need to get level 2 for his, one of his first quests. So, something you want to work towards. I That's why I said buy the, the packer and the helmet early on. Um, that being, so you need level 15. I, I must be just shy of level 6. Uh, but you also need to spend a million rubles. So, here's what it is. But that's what only business does. You need level 2. Now, cowboy hats used for the quest. Um, cotton hats used for the cabot quest. It's the very last quest, not a big deal. Some of these items mostly are used for the hideout. Uh, we're going to run into a lot of issues with stash space, as we can I can already tell. So there's going to be a bit of there's going to be a bit of a clusterfuck, initially at least. I won't unload all these items from here, but this is what we got from the raid. It was actually a very successful raid. Um, I will be selling some of these items. Um, but what I want to do is at the end of each probably six episodes, I'll do like a summary episode of the last week, where I'll go over all the items, the quests we've done, where we're going to progress on the next week. And all that kind of stuff so um it'll be a little bit messier during some of these episodes and then at the end of each week i'm going to have the the what, what i would call the selling on the flea market cleaning stuff up the hideout maintenance all that good stuff so guys thanks for watching another video if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe for future content i do stream on twitch every day of the week so if you've got any talk of questions feel free to hit me up on my live stream or if you've got any questions specific to this feel free to chuck them down in the comments below hopefully you guys are enjoying the experience i'm loving this and guys, lastly, I'll see you next time. Whoa, for the longest time.